Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to be considering the subject of resistance and resistivity in a little bit more detail. So in a previous couple of videos, we looked at the things that could affect the resistance of a conductor. Uh, we considered uh, length, cross-sectional area and temperature. For this video, we're going to zoom in very closely onto length and cross-sectional area. And we're also going to consider the resistivity of copper. So what we're going to do is we're going to use those three elements to calculate the resistance of a drum of cable. In this case we've got 100 meters of 6 millimeter squared cable. We're going to perform a calculation and we're going to figure out what the resistance of this drum of cable is. Now as always we like to tie our electrical principles into our real world installation work. When we're installing cables in the workplace before we even get the drummer cable off the van we should be calculating what the resistance of our conductors will be. So, for example, when we measure our R1 plus R2 value in the workshop, at the design stage, before a cable ever gets installed, we should have calculated what that R1 plus R2 measurement will be once we've installed the cable. In the back of your on-site guide, you'll find a table there in Appendix I, which discusses the resistance of different sizes of copper conductor and aluminium conductor, and that ties in very, very closely with what we're going to be considering in this video. So what we'll do, we'll do some calculations, we'll make sure that we've got our SI units right, and then we'll measure the resistance of the drum of cable and see if our calculation is correct. So let's see if we can calculate the resistance of our conductor. So there's a few things we just need to think about before we actually start doing this calculation. And that's how we're going to perform the calculation. So we're going to need to know four things. So first of all, we start off with resistance. Now, the mathematical symbol for resistance is R, a capital R. That gives us resistance. And of course, resistance is measured in ohms and has the unit symbol omega. We then have the resistivity of the material. Now, resistivity, uh, we use the mathematical symbol rho. So rho is resistivity. Resistivity is measured in ohm meters and we just combine the two symbols there omega and m. Notice that this is ohm meters not ohms per meter. That's something very different indeed. So ohm meters is the unit for resistivity. We've then got L and L is the length of the conductor. So we're interested in the length of the conductor. Of course this is going to be measured in meters with the unit symbol M. And then finally we have the cross-sectional area and for the cross-sectional area we're going to use a capital A for area and that's going to be measured in square meters and for that we use uh, an M to the power of 2 or M squared for meters squared. So those are the four things that we're going to be playing around with in this calculation in this formula. So for this calculation, we're going to be using the following formula. We've got R is equal to rho times by L divided by A. So there's our formula that we're going to be using. Now we've said that the resistivity of copper, so the rho for copper, resist resistivity of copper is equal to 17.2. Now notice this is important, micro ohm millimeters. Now, of course, we're going to be dealing uh, with the base unit for this. This is currently in micro ohm millimeters. We need to convert it into ohm meters. So there's a couple of things that we just need to be a little bit careful about here. Here we've got the mu symbol for micro. Now, micro means millionth, which means we need to divide this number by a million. Or we can tack on the end of it, to simplify it in our calculator, as we can change this to times 10 to the power of minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6. And then we've got this uh, lowercase m in front of the meter symbol. So this means milli or thousandth. So we'd need to divide this number again by a thousand. Or we can just simply replace this with times 10 to the minus 3. And again, that's going to be really nice and simple when we put it into our calculator. Now, because we're effectively taking this number and doing times 10 to the minus 6 and then times 10 to the minus 3, if you're familiar with your laws of indices, and if not, please feel free to watch the video that I've recorded on this subject, 
then all we've got to do is add these two powers together. So that leaves us with rho is equal to 17.2 times 10 to the minus 9. And that is now in the base unit of ohm millimetres. Ohm millimetres. So what we've actually done is we've, we've divided this effectively by a billion and turned it into a much smaller number. Notice though, this number and this number represent exactly the same amount of resistivity. So they represent the same amount. We've just expressed it in a slightly different way. The other thing that we just need to be a little bit cautious about when we're doing this is the cross-sectional area. So the area in this question is, we're dealing with a conductor that is six millimeters squared. So we've got six millimeters squared uh, of cable here. Now, generally speaking, where we see this lowercase m, our brains immediately go, well, that's going to be times 10 to the minus 3. However, in this instance, because we're dealing with area, it doesn't quite work that way. If you think about a meter squared, which would look like this. So let's say that this is a meter squared, so it measures a meter by a meter. If on this side we've got one meter, that is equal to a thousand millimeters. So that is a thousand millimeters. So one millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. Same on this side, we've got one meter is equal to one thousand millimeters. One thousand millimeters. Now what that means is that this side is made up of a thousand millimeters and this side is made up of a thousand millimeters. If we find the area of this square in meters squared, we end up with one times one, which gives us one meter squared. One meter squared. Now, if we find the area of this square in millimeters squared, what we actually end up doing is a thousand times by a thousand. Now a thousand times by a thousand is obviously going to give us one million millimeters squared. So here we've got one million millimeters squared. Okay. So we've got a million millimeters squared here within one meter squared. So actually one millimeter squared is not a thousandth of a meter squared, it is a millionth of a meter squared. So what that means is that actually this will not be used. We're not going to use times 10 to the minus 3. We're going to use, in this case, we're going to take that m and we're going to replace it with times 10 to the minus 6. So the area is actually equal to 6 times 10 to the minus 6. So we'll just tidy this up a little bit and then we'll continue with the calculation. So the actual area here is going to be equal to 6 times 10 to the minus 6, like that. So now let's perform our calculation and see what we come out with. So we're going to take our formula, R equals rho times L over A, and then we're going to put all the individual numbers in. So we've got resistivity is equal to 17.2 times by 10 to the minus 9. And then we're going to times that by the length of the conductor. And the drumming question is 100 meters long. So we times in that by 100. We don't need to do anything to this number because it's already in the base unit of meters. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by 6 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So what that ends up looking like will be this. If we go over to our Casio FX85 GT Plus now, we can see what that will be. Now again, this is the nicest way of putting this into the calculator. We can do it like this. We just press the fraction button there so we can put it in exactly as it appears in our calculation and avoid any errors. So notice we go 17.2 and then we press this button down here. This is our times 10 to the power of button. And then we need to make it into minus 9. So that's our resistivity value entered. Now when we start doing the next bit, uh, it ignores now the times 10 to the minus 9. It won't multiply that by what we're about to do here. It performs the next part of the calculation times by 100. And then we're going to divide that by 6 
times 10 to the minus 6. Notice that oddity. Normally when we see milli, we change that into minus 3, but because this is uh, in millimetres squared, it becomes times 10 to the minus 6. So if we hit equals now, we'll get our answer out. And we can see there that our answer is going to be 0.286 uh, ohms. 0.28, it's actually 0.286 recurring ohms. What we'll probably do here though, is we will round this off to do two decimal places because that's the uh, precision that our equipment will measure to. So we'll go 0 0.0, we'll round that up. This number is closer to, uh, is above five, so we're gonna round this up and that becomes 0 0.29 ohms. So we should get a resistance on our cable of 0 0.29 ohms. So now we'll go over uh, back to our drum of cable We'll measure it up and we'll see if we get 0 0.29 ohms or something very close to it. So we've got our drum of cable all ready to go. It's 100 meters of six millimeter squared conductor. So this is just in singles. So there's only one conductor, one core for us to worry about. Our calculation that we did uh, told us that we should be getting a resistance for this conductor of 0 0.286 recurring of an ohm. We've got our mega multifunction tester ready to go. The tester won't read to three decimal places, it only goes as far as two decimal places. And so we expect the meter to round this value off uh, to, it'll be 0.29 of an ohm if we've done our calculations correctly. So we've got this measuring, so we'll just reveal what the uh, reading on the meter is. And as you can see there, we're getting a reading of 0 0.29 of an ohm. So that's what the uh, the value of resistance of this drum of cable is. So we've seen how we can use that very important formula, R equals rho times L over A, to calculate the resistance of a conductor. We can use that to uh, calculate values of resistance for any cross-sectional area, any length of conductor, and any material of conductor. And we can use that to make sure that our circuits are going to be designed and installed properly and that they keep the installation safe. Thank you very much for watching.